Hi guys, welcome to this week's episode of Screen Talk. Today we are focusing on spoiler territory for a Super Mario Bros. movie. So this movie, fantastic. It's just a brilliant, brilliantly animated film that makes you laugh, makes you cry, makes you feel bad for the bad guys, makes you feel angry against some of the good guys, and weirdly puts you in the middle and goes, wow, that was pretty epic. So we're going to start off by reviewing over the movie. So it opens with Bowser attacking the Penguin Kingdom where it's all snowy and lava's flowing and Bowser steps out of his castle and he's like, open the gates! And Jack Black does a phenomenal Bowser voice in this movie. I mean phenomenal. And there's something else that he does during the movie which everyone is talking about. It's all over TikTok, it's all over YouTube, it's everywhere. And it's just a brilliant thing. So we find out that Bowser is after the Superstar, which is the invincibility star in the games where it makes you invincible. And it's like, woohoo, you know, kicking back, relaxing, chilling, all that lot. You know, just going through the level with this star. You can't die. It basically acts like that in the movie. It's quite cool to see. Then we get a really, really cool bit. We open with a Super Mario Bros. commercial for their plumbing b business. And it's amazing. Now, everyone's like, oh, Chris Pratt doesn't do a Mario voice. I'm really disappointed. I'm sorry, but he does the most impressive Mario voice I've ever heard from someone who isn't a voice actor in this movie during this commercial. And he even says, oh, do you think the accents are a little bit too hard, you know? showing why he doesn't do the Italian accent throughout the movie because they're just playing off their Italian heritage for the commercial. And Charlie Day, who's Luigi, just goes, nah, you know, it seems right. And it's a really cool uh, looking thing. And then we get a cameo by the original Mario, also known as Jumpman, who just goes, nah, it's a perfect what? And it's it's just amazing to see, and he's actually playing like the original Donkey Kong game, where the Mario, uh, where the barrels are getting chucked at Mario, and everything like that, and it's just absolutely amazing to see. Then we move on to uh their first job. So oh sorry, one important fact is that they meet Spike from the demolition crew. Which is a great thing because it shows where Mario was also in that as a wrecking crew thing and Spike had to ruin their job. And it's kind of similar in this movie, Spike hates them. It's quite uh, cool to see. So yeah, they get attacked by a dog, which is quite funny because uh, I don't know if they actually hate dogs or you actually see dogs in a Mario game. But uh, they go to this house to fix a plumbing and the dog, <laughs> Luigi accidentally steps on the dog biscuit and the dog hates him for it. And he kind of ruins their job. It's quite funny to watch. It's a hilarious scene. And then we go straight into uh, Mario and Luigi going home and meeting the family. And they're all laughing about the commercial saying, oh, what stupid outfits you're wearing, you know, where would you even get the idea of this? And they're just like, oh, you know, white gloves, it's a trademark. And it kind of is, you know, kind of like the trademark in the game. And they kind of bring that over into the movie. And then we get Mario served up some spaghetti with mushrooms. And he's like, ugh, mushrooms, I hate mushrooms. And it's quite a funny thing to see because mushrooms are the power up. And it's funny to see that Mario actually hates them, but has to deal with eating them just to get a power up. It's quite funny. It's quite a little twist on the uh, game verse of Mario. So after this, the his dad kind of says, oh, you know, you're bringing Luigi down with you. I can't believe you spent all this money on a commercial. I think it's stupid and uh, I think you should have kept your old job. And Mario storms off to his room, like, upset, playing a few SNES games. You can see a few SNES posters and everything like that. I don't know what exact games they are. But they are there for sure. And then Brooklyn needs saving. Bro Brooklyn's flooding. The sewers have been blocked up or something like that. So Mario and Luigi open a manhole cover, jump into the sewers and try fixing it. Now, on this bit, they actually get to the valve and then they fall deeper and bust through a wall. 
And the cool thing is that when uh, they actually bust through the wall, it's kind of in the shape of the 8-bit Mario head. And it's quite cool because you can just see it from like, I think it's two or three frames to show it. And it, it's quite funny to see. But then as they're traveling down, the underground theme plays. And it's quite a little, there's so many songs in this game, in this film, sorry, where it's remixed and everything like that. And it's just bananas how much they go into this and it's just brilliant but luigi then goes missing in a pipe and mario goes looking and mario gets sucked in too and we go to this in between realms where it's like pretty and like the uh doctor strange multiverse of madness realm between realms thing where all stirs are but this is like invisible pipes going to and from each kingdom and we see the Dark Land, we see the Sahara Desert from Mario Odyssey, we see Mushroom Kingdom, and we see a lot of other things as well. And one of the great things that comes out of this scene is where Mario says, Oh, as long as we're together, we can do anything. And it's quite a wholesome moment, and then they get split up. Luigi gets sent to the Dark Lands, and obviously Mario gets sent to the Mushroom Kingdom. So once this happens, uh Mario meets Toad, literally as soon as he lands, and Toad's like, don't eat that mushrooms, it'll kill you, and Mario has to explain that he needs to go save Luigi, and Toad explains that Luigi's now in trouble because he actually landed in the Darklands, which is controlled by Bowser, and it's quite interesting, because Bowser in this movie, he is a villain, he, they all say he's insane, but you get to see this other side of Bowser in the movie later on. And it, it's quite funny and impressive, actually, that they give Bowser this kind of time to uh, cement his character in this movie. But Luigi gets captured. So, sorry, Luigi gets chased by some dry bones. He breaks one, laughs about it, and then it chases him. Uh, my daughter was actually scared by this bit. and But then when Luigi like broke one in half, she was absolutely pissing herself laughing. Then Luigi runs into this castle which is occupied by Shy Guys and we get lots of little nods and tweaks to each of the Mario villains things. And as this is all going on, my, uh, the, oh, what's he called? The magic guy with the wand. I can't remember his name but he tells Bowser that a mustachio man has arrived in the Mushroom Kingdom and everything like this. And Bowser is singing a song called Peaches. And we find out that Bowser is in love with Princess Peach and he's going to ask her to marry him. And if she doesn't, he'll destroy the Mushroom Kingdom. It's absolutely amazing. And we get this uh, ballad by Jack Black called Peaches. And he's like, Peaches, 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 Peaches. And it's, it's, up, it's up there with one of the best songs in the world. I have to say it right now. It's an amazing song. Even though it's only like two minutes long on YouTube, and in this movie it's like 20 seconds, it's still one of the best things of the movie. Then we move into Mario training and finding out that mushrooms equals power-ups, and we see Princess Peach actually going through this training course. Princess Peach played by Anne Taylor, or I think it is, and she does a fantastic job, I have to say, because... It's kind of like a confident Princess Peach, not this helpless Princess Peach that's in the game. It's like, yeah, Princess Peach can kick ass, but she needs Mario's help to defeat Bowser, and not just, oh, we need Mario, because Mario's Mario. But it's all about strength in each character, and each character finding that strength. So Mario runs, sorry, Princess Peach runs a training course, does it instantly, looks insane. Does some crazy maneuvers, crazy flips, uh, and then floats down off the flagpole like sometimes in the game. And then Mario tries it and fails and fails and fails and fails. But during this, Mario finds out that the red mushrooms are power ups that make him taller and stronger and can jump a lot more. And we get a few Mamma Mia's and Wahoo's and stuff like that, and it, it's quite cool. It is really cool to see. Uh, so Mario goes through this and it shows that he's going through it all night because they need to leave for the Donkey Kong jungle in the morning. So we go through it and Mario nearly gets it on the last try but gets snapped by a piranha plant. 
but Princess Peach just says, oh, you know, no one gets it on the first time. Na, 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 na. And then we see a flashback to Baby Peach and her arriving in the Mushroom Kingdom and her being crown princess because she learned to protect the toads, which is quite a nice little thing to see in this Mario movie. We also get Baby Mario and Luigi where Mario's always protecting Luigi. But it kind of goes back on the... Uh, earlier conversations that the family has where he goes oh what are these stupid outfits because baby mario and luigi had them outfits on so it kind of backtracks on that they made him just for this job it, it's kind of weird to see but it's still nice to see baby mario and luigi then we get toad saying oh yeah we're coming along for the adventure and everything like that and they do this nice little cut scene where they're walking through all things mario gets hit by a fish they go to the sahara desert where you go in mario odyssey uh and eventually they re reach the donkey kong jungle and they go to ask cranky kong for his army now we first meet i think it's cool kong and he opens the door screaming and then gets in a car and takes him to Cranky Kong. And it's literally Mario Kart from then on. It's amazing. Uh, and there's this little... Uh, not a chase scene, but a little car scene where they're going through the village. And <laughs> Cool Kong runs into someone else, knocks him into a building. And then they use the parachute glider, like in the games. Uh, like in the Mario Kart games. To fly up to the Donkey Kong Temple. Then we get Cranky Kong saying, if you can beat my son in a fight, you can have my army. So Mario says, yeah, I'll fight your son, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and then we see Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. But first of all, I want to talk about the arena. The arena is literally, I mean, it's literally a 3D version of the original Donkey Kong Mario game where they're throwing barrels at each other. They even pay homage to this by Donkey Kong throwing barrels and stuff and it's really really looks amazing looks cool and I think they've done a fantastic job then Seth Rogen busts out his Donkey Kong voice which as everyone knows Seth Rogen does not do voices he's just himself but I kind of like that it kind of suits the Donkey Kong personality because Donkey Kong is big and muscly but he's also quite silly and it's quite funny to see where he's like, hey, bouncing pecs, it's what everyone came for. And everything like that, it's fantastic to see. And Mario goes through this and he fights Donkey Kong, getting his absolute ass handed to him. And then he goes for the power-ups. Now, he eats a mushroom, but due to Mario being Mario and not realising, he ate the wrong mushroom and it's a blue mushroom that shrunk him. So Donkey Kong like beats him up even more and then flicks him. And then Mario starts going for other power-ups. Gets to get a fire flyer one. Fire flower one, sorry. And uh, Donkey Kong just blows it out. He's like, nah, you ain't getting that. And uh, then he punches Mario up. And as Mario gets comes down, he finds another one. He breaks it. And then there's like a scene where it doesn't show him. And he comes down and he's cat Mario. And he's like... Oh, I'm a cat and everyone's laughing and Donkey Kong's still beating him and then all of a sudden he has the reflexes of a cat so he actually ends up beating Donkey Kong because he can now move out the way of all the punches and everything in this cat suit and it's really cool to see then after he beats that Cranky Kong says yep yeah, you can have my army and everything like that and it's really cool to see that the next scene is literally just mario kart in a game, in a movie so they pick the carts they go through all that and the the level of detail where they're picking the carts it's literally the scroll wheel from the game and everything like that i love to see it and then they say oh we've got a secret passage back to the mushroom kingdom and it's fucking rainbow road i mean rainbow road is literally the hardest one of the hardest courses in mario kart and they bring it into this movie with such finesse and proper give it love and attention and we get the blue shell as a koopa and everything and he's such an angry guy i love it uh the characters are really well done in this movie i have to say uh so the blue shell gets mario after this big fight 
I don't want to ruin everything you see. So I'm trying to skip over parts to next parts. So they have the big fight on the road. Mario gets blasted by the blue shell. They fall into the water and get eaten by this big eel. And they have to escape. And Bowser has now caught the Princess Peach. Ask him to marry her. And she says yes because he threatens to kill all the toads and everything. And then we get the Bowser wedding scene. Like in Mario Odyssey. Uh, he's wearing the white Bowser wedding suit. And it looks phenomenal. I mean, I can't, I can't complain at how good this actually looks. So then we get another little bit where it's literally just Mario versus Bowser, Donkey Kong versus Bowser, and then they crash through into the human world, and it's literally the ending of the movie, and they get the superstar, they fight Bowser, they beat him, they shrink him down and put him in a pot. But this movie was phenomenal. I mean, like, yeah, if you're a critic, you're probably going to hate it because it's not like, oh, this has logic to it or anything like that. It's just a fun movie for kids, and that's what it should be at. But all the critics are like, oh, this movie sucks. It's not this. It's not that. No, it's a goddamn Mario movie, and it's fantastic. I mean, I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. The characters, the voices, everything fit well. Chris Pratt as Mario, he may have got a lot of hate, but I think he does absolutely amazing in this. He tries the accent every now and then and gives it a little bit of ho-ho and everything, but all the sound effects, everything fit perfectly with that character. I, I'd give this movie a good solid 8.5 out of 10. I And I'm saying that because... My daughter enjoyed it, my missus enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. It's fun for the family, and that is what Mario is about, family fun. Now, critics are just there to ruin everyone's fun and say, oh, this movie didn't have a good story structure. Yes, it did. Mario games don't have good story structure. It's literally, oh, look, Princess Peach gets captured, Mario goes and rescues her. This movie is literally, look, Mario's here, he's going to the Mushroom Kingdom, Bowser wants to marry Princess Peach, but Mario wants to save Luigi. It all comes to an end. Bing, bang, bosh. Real good nosh. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want to focus on the animation part of the movie, which was basically the Minion-style animation, 3D models, but then sometimes it would go into 2D, where it would face on like a Mario level, and it looked fantastic. There's loads of... Uh, cameos in this movie where it's like uh one of the little blue things from Mario Galaxy who serves Rosalina and it is so depressive he's like death it's a sweet release please let me die hope is like hope is like freedom an illusion and it's just amazing and it ends on him as well just going oh what a happy ending or is it because now it's just an infinite dark void huh <laughs> Doesn't this make you want to play the uh, saxophone and then go do 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 do? And it's just amazing that they remixed all the songs, they made better ones. You get the DK rap, you get the underground, you get Bowser's song. Literally, Bowser on the keyboard goes do 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 do, and it, it's just amazing to see. And Jack Black in this movie, one of the best voice actors in this movie because he just does a phenomenal Bowser and that song Peaches is just phenomenal. So guys, that is it for this episode of Screen Talk. Mario movie, 8.5 out of 10. Go and see it with your kids. If you don't have kids, go and see it anyway. I think you will just enjoy it. Don't read too much into the story or anything like that. Just enjoy the movie. Thank you for listening. If you want to see a video format of this podcast go over to youtube on everything stev where i usually do like a little snippet of a video but this time it's going to be a snippet from the mario game just playing over the audio with a nice little intro and stuff like that but i want to thank you all for listening thank you and goodbye